Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the LightBeans e-commerce tutorial presentation. Today, I will present Unit 2, Design the Application. As I mentioned in Unit 1 presentation, the purpose for this series of tutorial is to help my students to understand how to use LightBean IDE to build an e-commerce application. All materials in this tutorial series come from LightBeans.org web page. The outline for today's presentation is following. First, we discuss the scenario of the application we are going to build, a football bean application. Then we get the customer requirements. Then we prepare the markup. Then we determine the architecture for the application. Then we plan the project. The scenario, a small grocery store, the football bean, collaborates with several local farmers to supply a community with organic product and foods. Due to a non-standing customer base and the increasing affluence to the area, the store has decided to investigate the possibility of providing an online delivery service to customers. A recent survey has indicated that 90% of its regular customers has continuous internet access and 65% would be interested in using this service. The grocery store staff has asked you, the Java web developer, to create a website that will enable the customer to shop online. They have also asked that you create an administration console alongside the website, which will allow staff members to keep track of orders. The store's location is in Prague. In the Czech Republic, because regular customers are both English and Czech speaking, staff has requested that the website support both languages. The grocery store has already purchased a domain and a web hosting plan that provides a Java EE7 compliant server and a MySQL database server. Staff has indicated that one technically oriented member is able to deploy the application to the production server once it is ready. Now, after we know the customer wants to build such application, as a software engineer, we first need to get the customer requirements. After discuss with the uh, affordable bean store staff, we understand we need to build the following thing. First, an online representation of the product that are sold in the physical store. There are four categories, dairy, meats, bakery, fruit, and vegetable, and four products for each category, which online shoppers can browse. Details are provided for each product, for example, the product name, the product image, the product description, and the price. Shopping cart functionality must be implemented, which includes the ability to do following thing, add items to a virtual shopping cart, remove items from, from the shopping cart, update item quantities in the shopping cart, view a summary of items and quantities in the shopping cart, place an order and make payment through a secure checkout process. Then we also need to build an administration console, enabling staff to view the customer orders. Plus, this application must guarantee the security in the form of protecting sensitive customer data where it is transferred over the internet and preventing unauthorized access to the administration console. Finally, we must support both English and Czech in this application. Uh, after we understand the requirement, then we build a user case. Uh, let's see, a customer visits the welcome page and select a product category. Customer browses product within selected category page, then add a product to his or her shopping cart. Customer continues shopping and selects a different category. Customer adds several products from this category to shopping cart. Customer select a view cart option and update the quantities for cart products in the cart page. The customer verify shopping cart contents and proceed to checkout. In the checkout page, customer view the cost of the order and the 
other information, fills in personal data, then submits his or her details. The order is processed and the customer is taken to a confirmation page. The confirmation page provides a unique reference number for tracking the customer order as well as a summary of the order. From these user cases, we need we to build the following web pages. First, the welcome page. The welcome page is the website homepage and the entry point for the application. It introduces the business and services to the user and enables the user to navigate to any of the four product categories. For example, if user click on dairy, then will bring him to a, a category page which display the product of dairy category. If customer click on fruit and vegetable, will navigate to the category page and display the products in the fruit and the veg category. Then this text area will display the text, introduce this uh, affordable bean shop, uh, store, the business. Next page, web page is a category page. The category page provides a list of all products within the selected category. For example, if customer selected meat category, then all the meat product will be listed here. The product listed with product image, name, description, price, then have a button for customer to add this product to the shopping cart. If customer press purchase button, then one unit of this product will be added to the shopping cart. Now, from this page, the customer also can navigate to any other pages if the link is provided. For example, customer can view card, go to the card page, can uh, click the button proceed link, uh, click the link proceed to checkout, then we'll go to the checkout page. Now let's see the card page. The card page lists all items hold in user's shopping cart. It displays product details for each item and uh, tells the subtotal of for the item in the cart. From this page, a user can do the following thing. First, if user click on clear cart, then he can clear all items in his or shopping, uh, her shopping cart. If the user click on update button, then he can update the quantities for any listed item. If the user click on continue shopping, he can return to previous category back uh, to select more product from that category. If the user click on proceed to check in uh, this link or button, then he will proceed to the checkout page. Now in the checkout page, the checkout page collects information from the customer user form. Customer will fill up his information here. After done, click on the submit button. This page also display purchase conditions and uh, summarize the order by providing calculations for the total cost. Everything will be the purchase condition will display here and the purchase calculation subtotal plus delivery charge will display here. The user is also able to send a personal detail over a secure channel. Once submit button pressed, all the information should be sent through a secure channel. Uh, the last page is the confirmation page. The confirmation page returns a message to the customer confirming that the order was successfully recorded. A order reference number, which will display here, is provided to the customer, as well as summary list of order details will be here. Order summary table, like include the products, quantities, price, total cost, date, processed, all this information, and also will list the customer uh, details information. Order summary and customer personal details are re uh, returned over a secure channel. Again, the security is one of the requirements for this application. Now, <clears throat> so this picture summarizes the business process flow. The user first uh, visits the website, will go to the welcome page, 
welcome page will display uh, the text that explain the business of this uh, website and display the categories. Then the user choose one category, then will navigate to the category page, will list all the products in that category. Then the user can choose add a product to the cart or choose view the cart. After choose view the cart, will navigate to cart page, will list all the items in user's shopping cart. Then user can uh, choose to continue shopping back to the category page uh, or clear the cart. Then all the items in the cart will be removed, can update the quantity and all proceed to the checkout page. In the checkout page, uh, the purchase calculations will be done and uh, will, the user can enter personal details and then submit the purchase, then we'll go to the confirmation page. Confirmation page will display the purchase confirmation details. Okay, now then can go back to the uh, welcome page, do another shopping if we want. After we understand what kind of web pages we need to build and the navigation between these web pages, we need to determine the architecture we will use to build our project. If we wish, we can code all of our business logic into JSP pages using scriptlets. A scriptlet is a piece of Java code enclosed in these percentage tags in a JSP page. JSP pages are compiled into servlet before they are run, so Java code is perfectly valid in JSP pages. However, there are disadvantages if we choosing to do so. First of all, scriptlet code is not reusable. The reason is that scriptlet code appears in exactly one place, the JSP page that defines it. If the same logic is needed elsewhere, it must be either included or copied and pasted into the new content. Second, scriptlet makes logic with presentation. Scriptlet are islands of program code in a sea of presentation code. Change either requires some understanding of what the other is doing to avoid breaking the relationship between the two. Scriptlets can easily confuse the content of a GSP page by expressing program logic within the presentation. Third, scriptlet breaking develop role separation. Because scriptlet mingle programming and web content, web page designer need to know either how to program or which parts of the page to avoid modifying. Fourth, scriptlet make GSP page difficult to read and to maintain. GSP pages with scriptlet make structured tag with GSP page delimiters and Java language code is harder to read, is harder to maintain. Finally, script code is difficult to test. Unit testing of scriptlet code is virtually impossible because scriptlet are embedded in JSP pages. The only way to execute them is to execute the page and test the results. So that's how the good. Then what is a good choice? The good choice is to use MVC architecture. MVC architecture, uh, M stand for mod, V stand for view, C stands for controller. Then what is a model? A model presents the business data and any business logic that govern access to and the modification of the data. The model notifies view when it changes and the next view query the model about its state. It also lets controller access application functionality encapsulated by the model. The view, the view render the contents of a model. It gets data from the model and specifies how the data should be presented. It updates data presentation when the model changes. A view also forward the user input to a controller. Look at this picture. The view forward the user's input to the controller. The controller defines application behavior. It dispatches user requests and select views for presentation. It interprets user inputs and map them into actions to be performed by the model. In a web application, user inputs are HTTP GET and POST requests. 
a controller selected the next view to display based on the user interaction and the outcome of the model operations. So this picture explains MVC model, how uh, the, the relationship between the model view and uh, controller. So here is the MVC model for this application. The, the client, the user's uh, customer through the web browser, send the request to the server that, which is the controller. Controller will, will, based on user's request, will ask information from the model, which is a session B EJB, which will interact with entity class, which directly persistence with the database. Then, based on those feedback and the user's request together, the controller will decide which view, what data in the view will present to the client, the customer. So that's, you see, in this model, the business logic and the presentation are separated. So it's easy to maintain, it's easy to write. The final step is the planning of the project. So after we understand what we're going to do, we follow the following steps to finish the project. First, we set up the development environment. Then we prepare the data model for the application. Then we create a front-end project files. Then we organize the application front-end. Then we create a controller servlet. Then we connect the application to the database. Then we develop the business logic. Then we add language support. Then we create administration console. Finally, we secure the application. Of course, at the end, we need to test the whole application as a whole. So acknowledgement, this is the end of unit two. Next will be unit three, set up the development environment. Again, all the materials of this presentation come from netbeans.org website. If you have any concern, please send me email. Goodbye. See you next time.